stations. We were talking about hydrogen stations closing a couple of weeks ago because Shell closed pretty much all of their hydrogen stations on the West Coast. But now, apparently, Shell is closing 500 locations a year in 2024 and 2025. Now, these aren't hydrogen stations. These are just gas stations in general. To put this in perspective, Shell has 46 thousand shell branded retail locations okay so if they close 500 a year that means they're closing one percent per year so it doesn't mean your local shell station is necessarily going to disappear so in the oil business you typically have somebody who owns the land that the gas station sits on and they quite likely also own the building then inside the building you usually have somebody who rents that building and is the gas station operator and they usually make a three cent profit per gallon or they have the right to resell for a markup from their oil company so a lot of times they do it on a commission basis or they may have a markup set up with the oil company now if it's shell oil and shell branded they probably have to sell only shell oil okay but what happens is there is a wholesaler somewhere that brings the trucks over with the oil. And so it's interesting because you generally have three parties that essentially own a gas station. In, in a sense, you've got the oil company, you have the retail landlord, and then you have the whoever's renting and operating that facility. And most people don't realize it's that complicated, but I'm sure there's a little more to this. Now you were saying that you looked up Shell's sustainability report. What did you see there? Yeah, so I I looked at the article, and the thing that triggered me was that they're going to focus increasingly on renewable energy, electrification. But the other thing they were going to do was integrated power. And I thought, what's integrated power? And so I did a Google search and ended up on Shell's uh, uh, sustainability report. And it turns out that that's part of their business where they sell renewable energy to other people and some of very significant corporations amazon and you know and, and microsoft and others and i thought wow and so when they're talking about also their efforts you know they're closing some stations but they've got oh, as you pointed out they've got nearly fifty thousand stations out there that appears that their plan is and assuming you know it makes sense logically financially is that they're going to begin to introduce more electric vehicle chargers at those stations, as well as, and of course, the the issue is, is that when you come into a, a you know to an electric charger, you're going to be there for you know 20 minutes, probably minimum, until we really get some of the super fast chargers to an hour. So what are they going to do? Well, we have a convenience store for you to go in where you can you know get yourself some pop. You can buy a taco. You know, uh, some of the stations around here, you can get fresh slices of pizza. So it looks like that that's part of their game plan is to take in, well, if they do the upgrade to electric is where it's feasible to then add, if it's not already there, to add a convenience store. So I thought that's interesting. But the integrated power part is really got, I had no idea. They make a lot of renewable energy and then they sell that to other corporations, and that's a significant and a growing part of the, the company business, which I thought, well, okay, that's cool. That's nice to see an oil company doing that. So, you know, this is kind of interesting stat. This is at the end of 2022. Shell owns 139,000 electric charge points. That's a big number. I had no idea that they had that. They give no reason for the plans to dispose of a 1,000 locations you know, what's interesting with that is, you know, companies are constantly closing down unprofitable locations. So, but anyways, you know, so I, I don't know how to read into the shell thing. We've seen some articles that talk about what an, an enormous impact EVs have had on the oil space. And yet I've gone and met with oil executives and they're showing that yeah. last year they, they increased oil usage by 5%. You know, one of the things Passenger cars only account for 25% of oil usage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so 75% of world oil capacity that's used is not used for passenger cars. Now, it may be used for commercial vehicles, airplanes, other things, but something like more than a third of it is used in 
manufacturing or as part of products. What what the oil companies are beginning to do because they see this inevit- inevitable growth of electric vehicles. I mean, the road could be long and bumpy to get to get to where we think it should be. But uh, now they're shifting over to plastics. Well, even think about asphalt roads. We do concrete roads in Nebraska, but when I lived in Tennessee, it was all asphalt roads. And so those have a high amount of petroleum products. <laughs> Stop your car from leaking oil when the road is literally made out of petroleum. Yeah, well, but it, but it's processed a little differently. There's a little more to it when when it leaks onto the road and then it rains and it washes into the sewer system and it gets into the water supply. That that's a different ballgame. Whereas what's in the road is solidified, and I'm not saying it can't. It's probably not leaching into water supply. To some extent, it's not the same. So this is an interesting question. We talked about the pieces of tire, the nanoparticles of tires that get shred, right? Why aren't we talking about the amount of oil that's dripping on? You know, you go to any parking lot of any shopping center in America, and you see all these oil spots. You see, as soon as it rains, you see this sort of a sheen on the road that is the oil where they dripped and think, why aren't we including that in that calculation? Because that doesn't come out of my car. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well. Okay. Moving on. What are we going to talk about? Well, what about your blink? What about your blinker fluid? My blinker fluid. Oh, yeah, I f- dang! I forgot about my blinker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.